I'm Steve Mann and this is Paper Classroom. Welcome to one of our water and chemical additive tutorials. In this particular tutorial we're going to be talking about equipment for processing the processed water within the mill. Now just to remind you there are three types of water that we use in the mill. There's influent which is water that comes in from outside the mill which we need to clean up before we can use it in the process. There's process water which is the water that is part of the process as it's being used and then there's effluent that's water that we no longer need or no longer want and we're sending it off site we're discharging it in a, uh, a legal and uh, good way. So in this particular tutorial we're going to concentrate on process water and the equipment that we use to clean up process water and to recover fibre from process water. This is a very typical paper making process. So as you can see here we bring in influent from off site. We clean it up and we've now got nice fresh water. We might use it in the stock prep area. Some of the water in the stock prep area we might then send down to effluent. Other material will carry on with the fibre suspended in it and it will actually be the stock itself. We'll use it on the paper machine. We'll collect all the water that's come through the paper machine and we may clean some of it up and put it back or we may not use all of it and therefore discharge it uh, through the effluent plant back to the river or the sewer. What's becoming more and more common now is this third circuit where we take the water from here and rather than discharging it to effluent we actually put it back into the water cleaning system and use it again. Now isn't that more sensible? Probably the water that's here is already cleaner than that water. So rather than paying to discharge that and paying to bring this in, we might as well just take our own water and put it back in the system. So you are eliminating or reducing discharge costs and you're eliminating or reducing bringing in costs. Anyway, so this is the system that we're talking about. These are water loops. This one here is known as the short loop or the primary loop. And these are just secondary loops and tertiary loops. So it's the equipment that we would use in those loops that we're talking about in this session. Now, one of the pieces of equipment is a disc filter. So as you can see here, we've lots of discs and it's the surface of this disc which is the filter. So you've got two surfaces to each disc. Disc filters vary in size as you see here. They can be up to 12 meters long. And typical disc diameters could be anything from two meters right up to five and a half meters. And they typically revolve somewhere between a half and one and a half meters per minute so i've just picked an average there of one meter per minute but anywhere between a half and 1.5 meters per minute is the uh, normal uh, rotational speed we typically bring stock in at somewhere between a half and 1.3 percent consistency and we sometimes use disc filters for thickening stock so this can thicken stock up to about 18%, typically in the range 12 to 18%. So what's happening is this is the level here where we have the stock. This disc dips into this uh, reservoir of stock and as it dips in here then water will pass through the disc and it'll be collected in this manifold in the centre and, and taken away. As it passes through the disc, fibre will be carried with it 
and the fibre will stay on the outside of the disc. So initially, of course, when, the, when you're just starting to form a layer, all the fines will go through. And therefore, in this area here, the filtrate, the liquid that passes through, containing all the fines and maybe bits of filler, will be a bit cloudy. So we call that cloudy filtrate. As the thickness of the sheet builds up on here, it acts more like a filter. And more and more smaller particles will be caught in the body of this filter. And therefore, the filtrate that goes through will be clearer. So we call that clear filtrate. And as you continue to build it up, that mat, that fibre mat could get quite thick and it could actually filter out everything. In which case, if you could capture this filtrate, this would be what we call super clear filtrate. As the disc lifts out of the stock to this point here, we have water jets here that focus on peeling off that stock and dropping it down the chute. Now in this particular disc arrangement, we only have the ability to collect two types of filtrate, cloudy filtrate and clear filtrate. But some discs, you can catch all three. So just to um, reiterate this, because the question has come up in the exam more than once, what are the three types of filtrate you can collect from a disc filter? And the answers are cloudy filtrate, clear filtrate, and super clear filtrate. <clears throat> Other than a disc filter, what you may also use is a drum filter. Now with a drum filter, this is almost like lots of discs put together and we wrap a cover around. So now the filtration area is the outside area of that drum. So for the same footprint, you've got a lot less filtration surface area using a drum filter than you do using a disc filter. Here again is a, a nice relatively simple diagram and this diagram has been on the exam in the past where they've asked you to label the four parts. So you can see here part one is obviously the inlet so the stock's coming in here bit of a weir over there and this is the inlet into this area. The height here, the head between the water on the, or the stock on the outside of the drum and the stock on the inside of the drum. That's the driving force to drive the water through the drum and capture the fibre mat on the outside. So number one is the inlet. Number two here this is the cylinder itself. Um, number three, this is a couturel. So what's happening here is, as this is going around in this direction, it's picking up all the stock. Here it's out of the water. This couturel will turn around and it will pick up the stock from the surface of this, transfer it to here, and then onto this discharge chute and away. So three is the cooch roll and four is the discharge chute. And that will then go into a, a chest where you can uh, keep the stop fairly thick. So that's the drum filter. Quite an old piece of equipment is really the, the vibrating screen, or some people call it the inclined screen. This is the actual screen. As you see, it is at a slight incline. And again, these things are numbered one to five. And again, this question or this diagram or similar diagram 
has come up on the exam paper where you've been given this diagram and you've been asked to label the five parts. And, you know, it's pretty obvious, really, isn't it? Number one here, this is the inlet. This is where the contaminated stock comes in. It squirts out here. It falls into this area. This number two with the dotted line, that's the screen plate. That's the thing that's actually vibrating. And these screens can have slots or they can have holes. And this backwards and forwards motion caused, causes the larger contaminants, the solid things, to work their way up the screen. And the fibres will pass through the screen. Point three here, number three, as you can, I mean, they're obvious, you can see them, the showers. So they're just cleaning showers to keep this screen clean. Now, the contaminants have worked their way up this inclined vibrating screen and they drop off the end into number four here. This is the rejects collection and then that will be carried away. That's often like a moving rubber belt that will carry it away. And the fibres that have passed through the screen will go this way and over this little weir and the accepts will go down that channel. So this is probably one of the older uh, screening devices before pressure screens were invented. So we've seen now three types of device used for either separating contamination from fibres or being used to thicken uh, the fibre stock. So we've got disc filters, we've got drum filters and we've got the vibrating screen. <clears throat> what we used to use for recovering fibre was this... Uh, arrangement here called a crofter. Uh, in my day, we actually used compressed air. All the modern day crofters use a technique that we call DAF, dissolved air flotation. And I'll tell you about dissolved air flotation a little later on. But I just put this picture up just to show you the crofter tank. You can always instantly recognize a crofter tank when you go around a mill because it's quite wide but shallow and as I say in the old days when I worked in a paper mill our crofters worked off compressed air they injected compressed air into the bottom of this device the air bubbles stuck to the fibers it then caused the fibers to agglomerate together and then you could scoop off the fibers from the top of the water here, from the top of the stock, and clear water was then taken away to use in other parts of the process. It's a very old fashioned method now, so this idea of dissolved air has now been replaced with, uh, sorry, the old fashioned injected air, compressed air, has been replaced by the dissolved air. So thank you very much for uh, watching this video. I hope you found it informative and interesting. And uh, please leave any comments and I look forward to seeing you in our future videos.